Welcome to Office 2013, class video number 43. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video or go to our class website. Hey, we're still studying Excel. This is Excel Basics 25, and we get to talk about Excel 2013 charts and graphs. Now, in 2013, they have changed the charting engine, so there's a bunch of exciting new improvements for charts. We're going to talk about in this video column, bar, pie, line, XY scatter, spark lines, oh, and the amazing recommended charts. Now we're going to start off by asking the question, what do charts do? Then we'll look at different chart elements and then we'll talk about what makes an effective chart and then we'll go on and see examples of all these different charts. All right, let's go over to the sheet pictures. All right, so what does a chart do? It, here it is, here's our chart. We went from unsummarized data, summarized it, and then created a chart. And what charts do is they visually portray quantitative data. Now, quantitative just means number data. You gotta have numbers if you're gonna make a chart. This is a column chart. We could have pi, line, xy scatter. All of those charts have to have numbers in order to plot. Now, you have to have labels also for an effective chart. Labels below so we know what these numbers are. Now, what does this do? This is like a picture saying a thousand words. By creating a chart, we have a visual portrayal. I can quickly see the tallest one is in June, and it was website sales. Looking at these numbers here, that's hard to pick out quickly. Picking out the second biggest one, hard to do when you're looking at the numbers, but boom, the chart does it immediately. It's August in-store sales. So what do charts do? Give you a quick impression of number data. Now let's scroll down here, and we want to be clear about what all the different chart elements are. Now this is a column chart. We'll look at other types also. Chart title. These heights for the columns come from the numbers. So the numbers always go into the chart and determine uh, the essential part of the chart. Vertical axis, horizontal axis. In this case, we have numbers on the vertical axis. The numbers, both here and the, the heights of the columns, are going to be called series. So you've got to take note of that. The numbers are series. This horizontal axis and even these items in the legend here, these are categories. Sometimes we could switch this chart and the categories will be here and the numbers will be down here, but they call these categories. When we look inside the chart at the dialog box that's pointing to the cells, the numbers will be called series and the labels will be called categories. Now let's scroll up here. Notice we have a legend and we have categories on the horizontal axis. How did they get there? Well, notice here are our row headers. These are our column headers. This is our summarized data set, either with the sum if formula or pivot tables. Now, earlier in the class, we learned all about pivot tables and all about the sum if functions to summarize data. But check this out. These are the row headers. These are the column headers. If you have more row headers, than column headers, or they're exactly the same in number. These row headers will show up on the horizontal axis. If the number of columns is less than row headers, those show up in the legend. Now it's easy to switch with a single button, but that's the default setup. Now before we go and create a chart, we want to talk about what makes an effective chart. This is the worst chart I could have possibly made. Effective charts come from eliminating chart junk. Now there's all sorts of chart junk in here. This is a terrible chart title. If this is sales data, then we need to put sales data for summer sales or something like that. How about this? We have a legend over here. It says May, June, July, but May, June, July are also in the category labels. That's unnecessary repetition. You don't want unnecessary repetition. That's chart junk crazy colors and patterns. That's chart junk we just don't need. How about here in these labels? It says series one, 
series one. That means someone didn't label this properly. Anytime you see series one, series two in a chart, that's chart junk. And the cardinal rule for pie charts is being broken here. Pie charts show you percentages or proportions, parts compared to the whole. So anytime you tilt the chart on its side, then a pie chart has distortions. This pie piece, 12%, looks bigger than this pie piece, 14%. So you don't want to tilt a pie chart on its side. That's chart junk. Now, in every example, we have about 10 charting examples here. We will run into some chart junk, and we'll make sure that we eliminate it. Remember, our goal is to articulate a message quickly. This is a picture. We want someone to look at it and immediately get it. Right here, we can look at it, immediately get it. It's the summer sales, and each one of these categories down here has a column height. Website sales in June is the biggest. In-store sales in August looks like it's the second biggest, and the smallest one is probably in-store sales in May. All right, let's go over and create our first chart. I'm going to go to column and bar. Now, on this sheet, we have our unsummarized data. And here we've already summarized using the sum ifs function. Now notice we have sales channel at the top of each column. So those are our column headers. And at the front of each row, our row headers, month. So this is adding with two conditions. Now we'd like to make a chart. And we'd like to show for each month the number for each sales channel. Now notice along the horizontal axis, we'll have our months. So we're going to use a column chart because we want to show differences across the months or the categories. Now, for cross-tabulated tables like this, Excel charting is perfect. You simply highlight the labels and the numbers, not the totals, and go to Insert. And there's our charting group. Next to the Columns icon, we'll click the drop-down. And we're going to select the first one clustered column. You've got to be kidding me. Just like that, it almost came out perfect right off the bat. That's because the charting engines are perfect for this cross-tabulated type of table. Now, I want to move this chart, and there's trouble sometimes with moving. If you click inside the chart, and that move cursor click and drag, you might accidentally move something inside the chart instead of the whole chart itself. Control Z when that happens. You got to point to the outside edge. So now I'm going to click and drag. Now the column chart shows us the differences across our categories. Our legend tells us what each one of the color coding means. It's looking perfect right out of the box. The one thing that's chart junk here is chart title. That doesn't contribute anything to our chart. So we want to come and click on the chart, and now we want to change it. There's three ways we can change a chart title. With the solid line around the chart title, come up to the formula bar, and you simply can type whatever title you want. I'm going to type Winsport Summer Sales. And when I hit Enter, our chart title is done. Another way is to click a second time. And when you see your dashed line, you can simply highlight and type whatever you want. So summer sales, I'm going to click outside the chart title. A third way, and this is my favorite way, is we can link this label to the cells. Now right now, all of these numbers, the heights of the columns, the category labels, the legend labels, all of this is connected. If I change any of it here, the chart will update. Well, the chart title is not connected, but we can connect it. Now with the solid line around the chart title, come up to the formula bar. Click, type an equal sign, and then click on cell G1. Now it puts the name of the sheet, an explanation point, that's part of the sheet name, and then G1. Hit Enter. And there we've linked our chart title to the cells. Now we want to create a second column chart to show differences across categories. And watch this. I would like to highlight May to September, and then hold my Control key and highlight the totals for May to September. Now, here's the problem. Don't do this. Don't start with your cell here, and then hold Control, and click on your labels, 
and then click on your numbers. If you have that extra cell, Excel charting won't know what to do. So insert column, clustered column. It gives you a message, I don't know what to do. So when you do that, highlight the labels first, then hold control and highlight the numbers. All right, you ready? Insert, chart drop down, clustered columns. I'm very carefully going to point to the outside edge, and when I see my move cursor, I'm going to click and drag. Scroll down, do the same thing. Highlight the title, scroll up, find my formula bar, equal sign, click on cell G1, enter. Now I'm going to scroll down. Now let's talk about these great formatting buttons off to the side. The chart elements, if I click on the plus, I can add a, an axis title, which we don't need here. Chart title we already have, data labels. Look at that, it'll put the numbers right at the top of the column. I'm going to select that one, that's pretty cool. There's some other elements we could add. Oh, that's how you add a legend. We do not need a legend, that's chart junk. Or trend line, that's for a different type of chart. So a bunch of chart elements, and this is actually a really big improvement over earlier versions. These items used to be up in the ribbons and they were really hard to find. Now they're right next to the chart. We could also format, if I click here and do style. I'm not going to do any of these. Once you picked a style, you could go over to color if you wanted and select a color. I'm not going to use any of the built-in styles. You can also filter. This is amazing, select all. June, August, September, click Apply, and instantly I can see just the ones I want. Come back, select all, click Apply. That looks just like our filter we learned about. All right, these icons off to the right don't contain all of the formatting chart elements, but here's the deal. You can click on any chart element, title, vertical axis, horizontal axis, columns, labels, whatever it is. Once you select the item, and you got to be careful, watch this, if I click a second time, now I've highlighted just that single column. I could do the same thing for labels. If I wanted to add bold to all of them, I would control B. Now I'm going to control Z. If I wanted just one, select it a second time, I've highlighted just one element, control B. Now I'm going to cont control B as bold, control Z to undo. I would like to format the columns, so I've selected that particular element. Now, sometimes it's hard to click and select the elements you want. Once you have one element selected, you can use your arrow keys to toggle through. And when I toggle through and I see my columns, all of them selected, now I want to either right click, format data series, click. That opens up a task pane. And a lot of the formatting is now done with task panes. Now I want to close this because there's another way. Once you select your element, you can use Control-1. And the way I remember it is remember, if I have a cell and a Control-1, that's format the thing I've selected, which is a cell. Here if I format, if I select the column when I Control-1, it opens up, not a dialog box, but the task pane, Format Data Series. And watch this, if I click on the labels, oh, it changes. Now there is something that's more difficult about these panes than earlier versions. So I've selected a column. In earlier versions, notice it's the green is on the series options, it's at series options. Well, there's a bunch of different things that are available to change when you have a column selected. Here's some of the effects, we're not going to use 3D here, or fill, there's the paint bucket, fill and border. In earlier versions, and I can use my collapse and uncollapse, in earlier versions the dialog box would list fill, border, all four of those, and series options all to the left, and so it was a little bit easier. So the trick for us learning in 2013 is you select an item and you can't find what you want over in the task pane for formatting, just click through these icons until you find the thing you want. All I know is sometimes I get totally lost in the chart, but I remember, oh yeah, just come over and click, click, click till you see the thing you want. Now I want to click on the column 
And what do I want? I want fill. So that's not it. Series options. Okay, paint bucket and fill. Now I want to come down here, and this is a great option. Vary colors by point. I'm going to boop, and there you go. That's looking pretty cool. Now there's some chart junk here, and you have to pick this up. There's unnecessary repetition. If we have numbers here, we don't need them here. Now you can choose. Sometimes people like think that this is cluttered, and this is less cluttered, and then the horizontal lines are good because you can kind of line up with the height of the column and the axis over here. But I want these at the top, so I'm going to click on the axis and use the keyboard shortcut for delete, delete. I'm going to try and select the horizontal lines and delete. Ah, that's looking good. Remember, we want the minimum amount of stuff in our chart, no chart junk. We just want only the elements that will articulate our message. And all we want is the months, the height, the number, and something that says what it is. Now I want to copy this chart and then look at a different chart type. The way you copy is you click on the edge and control C to copy and then come down here and I'm going to control V. I'm selecting a cell. Don't click the chart because then you'll paste a chart inside of a chart. Cell control V. And now I'd like to change this from a column. Now what does a column do? It shows us differences across categories. Well, a column is similar to a bar. Remember, columns hold up Greek architecture. They're vertical. Bars are horizontal. Now, you've got to be careful. Sometimes in statistics and other fields, they'll call this a bar chart, which, which it is. But in Excel, this is called a column. And I always remember columns hold up Greek architecture. But I want to change this to a bar chart. Right click change chart type. Or you could go up to design and there's change chart type. Right click, change chart type. Over here on the left I select bar. And we want clustered bar. Click OK. Now bars are great. They are just like a column chart. They emphasize differences across categories. But notice the categories are listed here on the vertical axis. Ah, but horizontal bar charts emphasize the differences more forcefully than a column chart. Also, if you ever have really long labels, the big trick is use a bar chart. Now, I want to change this. These are very skinny, so I'm going to do our trick. Select what I want and come over and look through the task pane. OK, so it's not fill. It's definitely not effects. Maybe it's this one. And sure enough, under series options, gap width. I'm going to decrease it. I'm just going to uh, come in here and say 100% enter. And there I have it. That's looking much better. Hey, I kind of like that. That's a cool bar chart. Now I want to come up here and show you two more bar and column charts. Notice category in the legend, category on the horizontal axis. Actually, I'm going to show you three charts. So I'm going to click on the outside edge, control C. Scroll down, control V. How about just switching? You want to see sales category on the horizontal axis and months in the legend. You can come up to design, and there it is. Switch row and column. Boop. And just like that, hey, that's awesome. Let's scroll up, control C, come down here, control V. Now, and Instead of having a legend and a horizontal axis separated, I'd like to see all of the elements for June together. So we're going to change this chart type. Right click, change chart type. And instead of clustered, I want stacked. Now there's a stacked 100%. I really don't like those, although they have their place. It's like a pie chart, but it's using columns. I like the stack column because it'll give us if I click OK, it'll sh clearly show us which month had the most sales. So clearly, this is the tallest one. So it really gives us the three elements, the different sales channels. Clearly, in June, website sales were the biggest. And it gives us the tallest. June is bigger than all the other months. That's a stacked column. Control C on the outside edge. Control V, and as you guessed, there can also be change chart type. 
bar, stacked bar. Click OK. Oh, I think I like increasing the gap width. I'm going to change it to 70. Enter. And just like that. All right, so that's pretty amazing. We saw on this sheet a bunch about column and bar. Now let's go over to the sheet pi. I'm actually going to scroll over here and go to pi. Now pi charts compare parts to the whole. And I would like to see for each month, so our labels, then our numbers, and I'd like to see each one of these numbers in a pie chart. So go up to Insert, Pie drop-down, and we're going to use the flat one, the two-dimensional, not the 3D. That'll distort the proportions. All right. And in general rule, once you get past seven elements, uh, then you can use one of these two to explode all the smaller elements into a second pie. But we're not, we don't have that many now, so I'm going to simply going to select. Now let's do some formatting. Click on the chart title, formula bar, equal, G1, enter. Select legend, delete. How about chart elements? Data labels, that's pretty cool, but let's go to more. And let's try category name, since we don't have the legend, and percentage. And what's so nice, look at that, instantly it's calculated the percentages for us. Now that's kind of cluttered and all in the center, hard to see, so we'll come down and say outside end. Oh, that is cool. Now, you know, we could, you could even spin this. Sometimes you want to spin the pie. Maybe we'll try and see if we can get these labels not right under. So I'm going to come over to angle and you can click and drag and it will actually spin your pie. Look at that. So there we go. Here I'm going to go down just a little bit. Alright, so pie always shows parts compared to the whole. It's good for percentages. Alright, now let's go over to our next sheet line chart. Now a line chart is great when you have some category labels and some numbers. And all you want to do is see the numbers, for example, quarter one to quarter four, how they're going up and down. Now we're going to highlight this data set. We got the field names at the top, labels and numbers, and we're going to go up to insert charts. And now there's line and scatter, and you don't ever want to get these confused. Line is when you have one number. Scatter or XY scatter, that's when you have two numbers. Out the X axis a certain amount, up the Y axis a certain amount. All right, so line, we have one number. Click the drop down, and I'm going to select, how about markers? There we go, up and down through the quarters. Now that this is not a very impressive chart, we'll have a bigger set of data numbers over here, but there is something that could vastly improve this chart. It's kind of floating above nothing, so maybe we could change the axis here. Select, and now we're going to go hunt through our task pane. It's probably not under fill, not under effects or properties. How about Axis options. So I'm going to click this, and there's a bunch of things here. Ah, there it is, min and max. So guess what? We're going to look over here, and we're going to guess, okay, so the minimum, let's say 500,000. Now notice something. This is a text box that gets a number. And most of the text box we've seen have that collapse button, which means you can link this to the cells. This is not linked. It's, in essence, hard-coded into this dialog box. I'm going to hit Tab, and we can see it perfectly changes our chart. The one thing you have to be careful of when you're hard-coding numbers into this axis option, or even earlier versions, it was the same problem, is that if the data changes and you get numbers that are less than 500,000, it just won't show them. This doesn't update. This is a number hard-coded, so you have to remember to come and change it later if you want it changed. But that is the way to change, in essence, truncate that vertical axis. Now I'm going to point to the corner. And when I see that diagonal white arrow, click and drag. Now I'm going to drag this down here. 
Now let's try another line chart. We have, even though it looks like two numbers, these are categories, equidistance categories for our horizontal axis. And then we want to see the up and down line for our sales number. Insert, chart group, line. Select the same one. Ooh, look at that. This is going to be one of the most important tricks for charting. When we select data and select a chart, oftentimes it won't guess right. So the most important trick in charting is knowing where the dialog box is that will allow us to change. Because what's happening here? It's plotting two lines. It tried to put this as a line, one line, and this as a second line. So now, here it is. I need to change this. I need to say, hey, chart, these were supposed to go down on the horizontal axis. So I go up to Design, and there it is, Select Data. Now, if you're in earlier versions, this series is not about earlier versions. Actually, that button used to be over on the left, but now it's on the right. Select Data. And this dialog box is the most important thing about charting. We can come and select any one of the series. And notice, we always put field names at the top. We've learned throughout this class to label everything, name things smartly. So when we come to this dialog box, we're not tricked. It doesn't say Series 1, Series 2. I know Year Sales. So Year, I need to remove that. So I click Remove. If I needed to edit, like the sales range wasn't correct or we added more records later, we would come and edit. And look at that. There's our collapse buttons. So the actual chart, labels, numbers, all that data for the chart is linked. If this changes, our chart dialog box will see that change. There's the series name. And there's the numbers. That's perfect for us. I'm going to click OK. We were just looking at the edit. This is the edit we want. Click Edit. And now Axis Label Range. Click OK. Notice something else. This says Series. Remember the word Series means the numbers. All the series that could be listed here, those are numbers. Horizontal category axis labels, even though they're numbers, they're still going to be our categories for the horizontal axis. Category, series. Click OK. Oh, that is much better. It got it perfect. Now, is there any chart junk in this chart? Probably. It says sales and sales. You know, I'm going to click here and delete. Then I'm going to click on the legend. Now I have to go look through the legend. It's probably under Legend Options. Ah, there it is, Show at the top. So that's looking pretty good. Again, the Select Data button here in the Design Chart Tools ribbon is the most important trick you can know with charts. All right, let's drag this down here, and let's look at one more example. I should have cut and paste. All right, so here, wait a second, two numbers, yeah. We can have two numbers in a line chart, but each one number will define a line. That's much different than an XY scatter. So for line charts, you certainly are allowed to have two numbers. And this will be the category for both, revenues and expenses. So I'm going to highlight, insert, chart group, go up to line. I'm going to do the marker one again. All right, so let's see, uh, delete, click on the legend, show it top, click on the axis. Actually, let's uh, change the number formatting in the actual cells and watch that it will change here. So if I change, highlight all of this, control one, zero decimals, click OK, instantly because it's linked, it recognizes that number formatting and changes it. If we ever wanted to change the number formatting, we'd come over here, and actually it's in the uh, series options, and we have tick marks, labels, and numbers. Down here, there's a whole number category linked to the source. If this is not checked, then you can put any of your normal number formatting. You'd select from this drop down here.
All right, so line charts, one number for each of the lines across some category. Click on the corner of the chart, Control X. Click in a cell, Control V. So we can certainly move a chart just like we can copy a chart. So line charts. Now let's go look at XY scatter. I'm going to scroll over to XY. Now we have two numbers here and XY scatter charts. If you know algebra or linear algebra, you're doing regression analysis and statistics, the, the charting for XY scatter is absolutely amazing and a powerful tool. But even if we don't do algebra and statistics, we can still use a scatter chart. And here's how. If we have two sets of numbers, this is our studied, and this is test scores on a test. If we suspect there might be some relationship between the two numbers, we can simply plot it as a scatter chart and see. We would suspect that the more hours you study, the higher your test score. So let's test it. Let's just plot it. Now the one trick is, is you do have to put the x variable to the left. If you put it to the right, then you'd have to use the select data button and change it because Excel will always assume that the X variable is first. Now you could think about it this way too. Which one of these variables do you think influences the other? Yeah, probably the more hours you study, the higher your score. So you put the variable that has influence first or the X variable. All right, control asterisk to highlight the whole table. Insert. There's our little drop down for scatter. Now, the dots or markers, that's the chart you use if you have sample data. If you have a model, see, for example, this is sample data. You can see that, that, that makes no sense at all. But if you have a model, like in accounting, you have the fixed cost, variable cost analysis. That's a model. You create a formula where there's an X and a Y that moves in a predictable pattern. That's when you use the line. When you have actual sample data that you've collected, that's when you use the scatter. So boop, and there you go. You could see if this is supposed to be hours studied, and this is test score, it looks like as we increase the hours, the scores go up. If you drew a line, it would kind of go like that. As one variable goes up, the other one goes up. Now, we got a bunch of work to do here. Even if you don't know algebra or statistics, what is wrong with this chart? Just look at it. Hit pause. Now you're back. It doesn't have any labels. If someone's looking at this, they have no idea what it means. We need a label here and here. Now this is cool. I love this. We click the plus axis titles. Much closer and easier than earlier versions. And now let's do our trick. Click up in the formula bar, equal sign, our studied. X is on the horizontal axis. Axis title, formula bar equals test score, enter. So now that is already much better. Kind of looks as you increase. This goes up. Now let's change this title up here. And I don't have anything in the cells. We're going to type relationship between our studies and test score. Enter. So here's a trick. If you ever go to algebra or statistics, you learn how to do the regression line. And it takes a long time to calculate by hand. But check this out. You can come to the markers and right click the markers. And it says add trend line. Or remember over here, click our plus and add trend line. It assumes you want a linear. Let's click on the line and look over here. I'm going to click that to turn it off. Trend line options. Oh, you could do fill and line and effects, but we don't want to do any of that. We just want to come over here. Linear is the one it assumes. And if you ever take algebra or statistics, you'll learn how to create the equation and R squared. And if you do it by hand, it takes a long time. And the charting engine does it automatically for you. It's amazing. Y equals 1.513x plus 65. 
The 1.5 is the slope. The 65 is the y-intercept. R square is the influence the x has on the y, not causation. All right, so that's probably more than you ever wanted to know about xy scatter, but it is a very useful chart. I'm going to click and drag this over here. Now, let's go two more charts. We've got to talk about spark lines. I'm going to go over to the sheet called spark lines. Now, here we have some test scores. And we want a little cell chart called a spark line. Now, the famous author about graphing and charting, his name is Edward Tufte, and he wrote a book, Articulating Quantitative Data Visually. And he invented this little spark line. Spark lines will actually have a little chart here. And if we do a column chart for each one of these, we can get a quick visual impression of how the data changed from test one to test three. So you highlight these cells. Actually, I'm going to hold Control and roll in a little bit. Insert spark lines column. It's asking me where the data range is. I'm just going to give it the numbers. And then click OK. Now, very important, there's a sparkline design, and there's one, two, three, and there could be a different min and max for each one of these. And if I'm comparing them, I need them all to have the same min and max. So you've got to go to axis. It's asking you vertical axis minimum, same for all sparklines. Axis, it's asking you vertical axis max, same for all spark lines. And so now, here we can clearly see that test one, there's lots of low bars, not very many high bars. And then there's more high bars here, and then lots more by test three. So that's called a spark line. Hey, you know, here's another cool spark line thing we could do. I'm going to click on a browser and go to yahoo.com and finance, Yahoo Finance. I'm going to type Goog for Google and get some stock data. And then over here on the left, historical prices. I'm going to come down here to the, just the data set they have. And I want to copy this. You can't copy just the whole column, so check this out. We're going to copy the field names at the top and then copy all the way down. This will bring lots of junk with it. And I'm going to try to come right to the bottom. And you can pick whichever stock you want or or um, date range, control C, alt tab, and instead of just pasting, I'm going to click in this cell and go up to home, paste, paste special. And this is a great trick when taking stuff from the internet. Click on text, paste special, text. And then I don't get any of the junk. Sometimes there's links. Sometimes there's little objects. Now, I actually want to keep the date and the adjust, adjusted price. Highlight from open to volume, and then use Control shift down arrow. Delete key. And now I'm going to click in this cell, Control asterisk to highlight it all. And I'm going to point to the edge. And this is the move cursor. Double click. And I'm going to call this Goog stock price. Control B. Now watch this. I'm going to make a spark line of all this Google, this Google stock data. So I'm going to go up to Insert, Spark Lines Line. It's asking me where the data is. I'll click in the first cell, Control Shift Down Arrow. OK. Oh, look at that. That's terrible. That's backwards. I'm going to come here and sort this column date. So right click, sort, oldest to newest. And instantly, now we get from left to right, right? Here's our August 16th all the way down to November 18th. And that would be a little spark line. Now, what would you do if you were adding a new number every day? You know what? We could highlight this whole thing, Control Shift Down Arrow, convert it to a table, Insert Table or Control T, 
click OK. And now, check this out. If we come down to the bottom, as we remember earlier in this class, Tab allows us to add a new record to our table. I'm going to type 19-NOV-13. By the way, that's just number formatting. Tab. And just to show you that it works, let's say tomorrow uh, Google stock goes down to 870. And let's see, did it update? You betcha. That is so cool. So I have a little spark line at the top. And I have my data set saved as an Excel table. And sure enough, that is picking it up. All right, we have one last amazing chart trick. RC stands for Recommended Chart. Now we know this data set is not summarized. So we could easily come over and create a pivot table or some formulas. But recommended charts will do both for you. Now recommended charts cannot do a lot of charts. But when you have basic information like a sales channel, product, sales rep, it'll just, with one click, summarize the data and add a chart. So our goal is to find all of the, the quads, right? That's $99 there, and then 66, and then 68, and add up all these numbers, summarize them by with one condition, right? So instead of doing it over there, we'll let recommended chart do it for us. Insert recommended chart. And it's not going to get everything, but again, it will get some things. Count of revenue by product. It actually went through and counted how many of each boomerang product was sold. If we click on the next one, sum of revenue by product. That's exactly what we want. If we click on the next one, it says average revenue by product. That is totally cool. So we want the second one, sum of revenue by product. And notice this icon means pivot table. So it's going to create the pivot table and the chart for you. I'm going to click OK, and it will put this pivot table and chart on a new sheet. I'm immediately going to come over here and call this pivot table chart. And that is totally amazing. Now we have to probably do a little fix in here. I'm going to come over and this is a pivot table. So remember, we right click number formatting, not format cells, number formatting. And I'm going to add currency with no decimal showing. Click OK. Oh, look at that. It picked it up. Click on the columns. I'm going to close my pivot chart fields. And I want to change the fill. So I'll come over here. Vary colors by point. That is absolutely beautiful. So there we have a quick chart. We didn't have to summarize it. It summarized it for us. All right. So charts, we saw how to do recommended charts, spark lines, XY, that's when you have two numbers, line chart, that's just one number and a category, pie chart, that is comparing the parts to the whole, column and bar. When you have a cross tabulated table, oh, column charts are perfect comparing numbers across categories. Here's a single series. We turn it on its side and call it a bar chart when we want to emphasize the differences. And sometimes we even stack them column or bar. All right, we'll see you next video.